All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. Okay, so I wasn't going to do a video about this, but I know a lot of y'all have been asking about my opinions on what's going on in Afghanistan right now. So I figured I'd just do a quick video. Uh, we have like a, a little clip here, so I kind of want to check this out, see, see how it's summarizing everything, because I haven't really been watching like actual news segments. I've been reading, getting updates, getting updates from my buddies who are, you know, going over there and doing their thing. But yeah, I just, I'll say it's, it's a shame what's going on. I mean, or really what has already transpired. I mean, not to mention like that there's equipments. Yeah. There's equipment that was left behind. Now it's in the hands of the Taliban. You have all these bases, all these vehicles, all this infrastructure that's being left behind for them to just pick up and use. So I, I'm not really sure what happened there as far as the logistics of the, the pullouts. I know it was kind of quick, but there was supposed to be a, a retrograde plan in place to make sure that that wasn't really happening as much. But we're sort of seeing a lot of that pretty recently in the news. And I'm not sure it's just because the, the Afghan National Army was supposed to be looking after this sort of stuff. I, I mean, it makes sense for them to, to take over some of the bases and also take some of the equipment and use that to sort of supplement what they already had. But it didn't seem like it, it was really used that much. So it kind of sucks. Now all that stuff is in the hands of the Taliban. You had all this money wasted, all this time spent on this. And, you know, it's not necessarily wasted per se, because again, it was trying to combat terrorism. And, and there was a big thing going on there. And it was very effective for a certain amount of time. But now that all this has happened, a lot of people and a lot of my buddies, especially, you know, what, what happened with the ANA? Why, why did they push all the way back to, to Kabul so quickly? You know, I don't really, I don't really know. I don't know the story. I know that they were equipped. I know that we trained them, but it, it, it didn't happen, whether it be for funding, whether it be for discipline, for order. I mean, especially with how quick the Taliban are moving throughout Afghanistan. There's a lot to say about it. There's a lot of politics, and I don't know the full story, but I would just say it's a shame what has happened. So we'll check out this new segment and see how it's sort of summarizing everything. I don't know what it's going to be focused on. It looks like this is from ABC News, so I don't know. Hopefully we can get some, something unbiased here about what's going on. But this is more focused on the evac evacuation flights that are happening in, in Kabul, which if you guys haven't seen that, it is some pretty crazy footage. So yeah, we'll check out this video and see what they have to say about the situation. The chaos in Afghanistan as U.S. troops head back into the country to secure Kabul's main airport. Mm -hmm. Thousands crowded onto the tarmac in a desperate attempt to get away from the Taliban. 640 people crammed into a C-17 military plane oh and tens gosh. of thousands. Just look at that picture. Holy cow. And I got to say, good shit on the Air Force and, and whoever was taking part in this. Because, <laughs> I mean, it took, it took a lot of people to be like, hey, it, it's fine. Let this happen to, to fit that many people on a C-17. I think normally with like paratroopers or whatnot, there's no more than 100 at a time. So... A C-17, it's, it's very massive. It's pretty surprising that that thing can fly, but to fit all these people and take all these people in is really the, the least of, of what they can do, I guess. But there's videos out there of them like actually clinging to the C-17 and some actually falling off. And it, it's just, it's brutal. And seeing this picture here, it's, it really hits Thousands home. are still waiting to evacuate. Senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel is in Kabul with the latest. This morning... The flight from Kabul in one stark image. A U.S. Yeah. military cargo plane reportedly carrying 640 men, women, and children, all fleeing That's Afghanistan rough for their too. lives as the Taliban seizes control. The humanity and generosity of the crew as a child clutches a toy a pilot's given them. Desperate That's crowds awesome. had been rushing Good the stuff. runway, trying to get on board planes, even clinging to acraft as they taxied for takeoff. Yeah, that's, that's some brutal this morning, footage right rapid there. rapid evacuations underway for Americans in Afghanistan. Nearly three and a half thousand troops now at the airport resuming yeah, operations hours after being forced to stop flights to clear the tarmac. Yeah, so a lot of people were confused about why, you know, why are they sending all these troops like the army pulling out of Afghanistan? The purpose of those troops being there is just so they can, you know, support the evacuation. And there's deals in place, uh, I guess, like with the, the Taliban and the U.S. for the withdrawal. So as far as I'm aware, there's no current like combats between the U.S. and the Taliban. I'm not really too sure on that one. I haven't gotten updates. I know a few of my buddies have actually pushed out over there. So I might get some updates from that later on, but I guess we'll sort of see. We'll probably see it in the news. But I think that the Taliban are going to be pretty 
you know, smart in how they deal with this. They're probably not going to try and agitate as people are trying to, to push out. But I mean, there's also footage out there where they're keeping them from entering the airport. So it's, it's pretty shocking. They have all these checkpoints set up. So a lot of these families that are hoping to get out of Afghanistan are, are out of luck already. Far, the State Department says 2,000 people have been evacuated from Kabul, the U.S. prioritizing American personnel Doesn't and Doesn't seem like that much, honestly. But thousands of Afghans, desperate for their turn, people who risked their lives to help the U.S. mission. The Taliban now guarding the only way into the airport and so far letting yeah. only foreigners pass. The group declaring they're in full control, setting up checkpoints throughout the city. Pentagon spokesperson John Kirby telling George earlier the U.S. has control of the airport and those evacuations will continue. What about those hmm. 30,000 Afghans okay. who need to be rescued? We've seen these heartbreaking pictures of people chasing the planes, packed into planes. What is the yeah. latest on them? When do we expect to have everyone out? We plan on being on the ground there in Afghanistan for the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's not just about moving out of America. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely long enough thought i mean again with everything unfolding as quickly as it is i kind of thought that they were in a rush but again things are going to get pretty hectic in the next couple of weeks uh, i think especially with how everything's unfolding you know you have the taliban setting up these checkpoints and again like they're saying they're only letting foreigners through so you know the u.s is trying to get people that help the u.s in their mission like interpreters and whatnot and you know the likelihood is they're not going to be able to get to these checkpoints to actually do the evacuation, which again, it's, it's just a shame. It is very much about meeting our moral and sacred obligations to those Afghans who helped us over the last 20 years, getting yep. as many of them out as we can. As the chaos plays out on the ground, President Biden insisting that bringing U.S. troops home is still the right decision. I stand squarely behind my decision. After 20 years, I've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw U.S. forces. And Ian Pannell joins me live. Yeah, and again, that is, it's its own thing. A lot of people would have a lot of opinions on what we should be doing or when we should have pulled out of Afghanistan. But, I mean, you have to think, we did everything in our power to set them up as far as giving them equipment, giving them the training, you know, to the, to the ANA, the Afghan National Army, and the police. We've put in our effort. We've put in our work. Again, it's... It's really shocking to see, especially someone who grew up with the global war on terror. Like, yeah, I, I remember 9-11. I remember that pretty vividly. And then just my entire adult life is pretty much the global war on terror and, and us being in, you know, Afghanistan and whatnot. So it's pretty shocking to see that within like less than two weeks time that has pretty much just completely retrograded. And it's it's I don't know, it's a stark contrast to what we saw even like three months ago. From Kabul now with more on this. Ian, the Taliban is now saying they're declaring amnesty across Afghanistan. What exactly does that mean? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> Well, what it means in theory is that uh, they will <laughs> yeah. not go after people, there won't be revenge attacks, uh, they've ordered their fighters not to go into the homes uh, of people to behave well, uh, they're saying that they want women to return to the workplace, they want them to be part of the new Afghanistan, that they shouldn't mm. be afraid. I mean, the Taliban have been on really an incredible PR blitz, in fact, they're about to hold the <laughs> PR, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Again, you can't take anything... I mean, everything needs to be taken with a grain of salt right now. I wouldn't take anything at face value because everything is emerging so quickly. The Taliban are going to be very quickly or they're going to be very cautious in what they're saying. And again, it really time will tell exactly what their intentions are. And I think basically what's happening right now, you need to dismiss and sort of wait to see how it plays out coming hour uh, they've also said to foreigners to diplomats please don't leave uh, the messaging that we've received certainly on the streets from mm. the taliban has been very very welcoming uh you know they're saying that they want us to stay they want good relations with the neighbors even with america uh, they in other words don't want a repetition of the original taliban regime which was isolated internationally was under sanctions mm. It was a very, very different country there. Very underdeveloped, badly damaged by the civil war today. Yeah, so they're saying they want to work with the U.S. And I just, I don't think that that is possible anymore. I don't think it's, it's something that needs to happen, for one, because, again, the U.S. is withdrawal. The U.S. is, they're, they're trying to get hands off with this. So I don't think that's going to happen, nor do I think it needs to happen. So, again, I don't know what's 
the intentions are of trying to say all of this. Again, it's trying to have like a political role. And I just think it's going to be very hard for people to see the Taliban as like a political organization, you know, having this political control of Afghanistan. It's just, it, it's not something that people are going to be welcoming to. So I don't know exactly how that's going to unfold either. It is very, very different. Young Afghans who've known nothing other than life not under the Taliban, expect something very different. Everyone has a smartphone. Taliban even taking selfies with us. Everyone's mm -hmm. running around taking pictures, posting them to their own social groups. So there is a hope that the Taliban are true to the word, that there is a chance here to try and remake Afghanistan, not in the old mold, but perhaps also not ideally in the, the previous uh, government. But it Yeah, so I will say that, that the Taliban have definitely evolved as far as, you know, technology and whatnot. People think the Taliban are just like, you know, farmers with AKs. And, you know, that might have been true at one point and it might be true in some certain circumstances. But the Taliban has some pretty, you know, pretty nice equipment now. And they have some training that a lot of people wouldn't expect them to have. So, I mean, they have definitely evolved. But as far as moving into like this, you know, geopolitical organization, I don't know exactly how that's going to fit with the Taliban because it's going to take a while for them to sort of transition to that, if it's possible at all. In something that is in between, that is perhaps tenable to some people, but that's what's promised. The reality remains to be seen. The proof of the pudding <laughs> is going to be in the eating. Still many women yep. are hiding behind closed doors and are fr afraid to come out. I mean, even anecdotally here in the hotel, all the female staff who were on reception the day we arrived, they haven't been seen since. I've just been chatting to people uh, saying, look, at the moment, they're just staying at home uh, because mm. until there's real control by the Taliban and they actually enforce these rules that they say they're going to abide to, then people are just going to vote with their feet. And there's still yeah. a fear. There's still desperation by all those thousands who work with the Americans just to try and get out. Yeah, the wariness Ian definitely makes sense. Kabul. Ian, thank you. Stay safe. Hi. Yeah, so again, this is, it's, it's a developing situation. I guess we'll be sort of seeing how everything goes down. I don't think the Taliban are going to do anything as far as attack the U.S. or, you know, do anything as far as like combat operations. But the checkpoints are not going to help. It might get to be a point of contention when you have the U.S. trying to get certain people and the Taliban not allowing them to come through. I'm sure they're going to be agreeing to most of the demands that the U.S. is trying to get as far as, you know, pulling in some of their people to evacuate. But I, I don't know. I don't know where this is going to go. Again, I do have a lot of buddies that are over there right now. So I guess I can try and get some information from them, see how everything's going down. But of course, there's going to be some strong emotions, again, just based off of, you know, what people have, have sacrificed for this war. And it, it is pretty crazy thinking that there's people who have grown up in this war and that's pretty much all they know you know people who are like 19 20 years old were born when this was already going on so a lot of people might not understand it so it, it kind of makes sense there's going to be a lot of confusion a lot of mixed opinions so I, again it's hard for me to say that my opinion is more valid than anyone else's but yeah it's it's just it's a shame that's pretty much all i have to say about this this whole situation so hopefully we can you know move past it and you know, try and get the best for the people of Afghanistan, but I, I guess that's kind of out of kind of out of our control now. So let me know what you guys think about this. I know a lot of y'all have also served there, and you know you have some strong opinions just based off of what you've seen or you know maybe what you sacrifice. So if you guys have some opinions, please throw them down in the comments section. If you guys have any stories to share, throw it down below as well because I think we'd we'd like to to sort of see all these different opinions because again it's. It's a very weird situation. I, I don't know where it's going to take us, but uh, hopefully it's it's not as rocky as you know a lot of people are thinking. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. I figured I'd just do a quick, I say quick video, a little bit longer than I thought, but I figured I'd just do a video about this because I, I know it is definitely something that a lot of y'all are thinking about. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. If you want to go in the Discord and share your opinions as well, you can do that, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. That's it for this one, so I will see y'all in the next one.